Of all the people you've advised over the last 10 years who followed your advice, what were the results? What percent got to their optimal blood sugar, blood pressure, and weight? And what percent reversed major health issues? What percent didn't get the respected, expected results? So I've been in this work for about 16 years now, and I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of people directly and obviously thousands indirectly, like audiences, people that have read my books. I get these beautiful emails every day. Like, I love my work. Like, I wake up every day, like, ooh, what do I get to do today? Because it's so extraordinarily powerful how much this helps, like, eating this way. And I just feel so honored to get to play a role in that way or just help take people on this journey. I love to say that results are typical. If you follow this way of eating and you stick to the plan, you will succeed. Interestingly, what I was taught in graduate school, what doctors are taught in med school, because I teach a lot of healthcare professionals, I've written two peer reviewed medical journal articles for healthcare professionals on how to do this. Basically, what, what we learned is that you want to manage disease. But what I've seen in my practice is that we can actually reduce risk for the disease itself. And we're even able to reverse it. I have claims getting off their medications results are typical. They do get off their medications when they eat this way. So I would say, I would be bold enough to say everyone that follows this plan gets healthier. Of course, you know, I can't help everyone. And I spent the first 10 years trying desperately to convince people of how health promoting this way of eating is. And I would, you know, bang my head against the wall, you know, and this still happens with people, my loved ones and people I care the most about. It's like, you want to influence them. You want, you beg, I beg them. I bombard them with information. You, I've cried to my loved ones that are suffering because of their diet to no avail. And I realize that I, I, my saying about that is you could lead a human to healthy, but you can't make them eat. So if you want to do this, I will love you up with all the information that you need and support that you need, but you can't force the issue. So everyone that does follow it, does get the results. And I've also seen people have things that I didn't expect to see, like things that I have just, I mean, crazy things. Like I, I've, I've seen the craziest things that weren't, we were not expecting. Like it's not really quite substantiated in the literature yet, like getting off thyroid medications or reducing, I'm not, please don't try this at home, but there's things that we didn't necessarily expect. And I think that the evidence is growing across the board as more researchers are investigating, as clients are going back to their, or patients are going back to the doctors and the doctors say, what did you do? Whatever you're doing. And, and that's kind of information for the doctors. Cause there are still, believe it or not, there are, I would say primarily the majority of physicians still don't even see an association between diet and health, which is mind blowing, mind blowing. We know that, let alone jumping all the way to avoiding animal products and, and no processed foods and all that. So I think we're, you know, it's, it's happening. It's definitely happening over the last 16 years that we've come leaps and bounds, but I continue to be surprised daily by the results in my clients and the, the outpouring of interest in the healthcare community, the public community. It's been very exciting. A recent study claimed vegans have more bone fractures. Is this true? Unfortunately, this was a very well done study and it is very alarming for those of us that are, you know, teaching a plant-based diet. So we're looking at, we're trying to hypothesize, what could this be? And there's a lot of different variables that come into play, but they saw, they solved for a lot of those variables. It was a very well executed study. It's a reminder. I take it as a reminder that vegans need to be very mindful of their B12, make sure you're getting your B12, make sure you're exercising because bone health is multifactorial. It's really one of those complex complex issues. It's not very simple. And so B12 is an interesting thing, making sure you're getting enough calcium, you know, making sure you're getting your leafy greens, your legumes, you're getting your um, vitamin D, making sure your vitamin D levels are um, optimal. And that just, that requires just getting a, a regular blood test and knowing your levels. Like the more information you have, the better, like you just want to study yourself and your body and what checking in with yourself to make sure you're doing all the stuff that's important and crucial for optimal health. So vitamin D levels, getting enough calcium, um, you know, getting vitamin K. So those leafy greens, I always say, I always sign my, I autograph my books with leafy green love. And I, I have a new podcast called the choose you now podcast. And I always sign off with leafy green love because leafy greens are 
so important for all of these, everything we talk about today is leafy greens and legumes and all that. So all of those things and legumes, by the way, and getting all those things. I have a, a mnemonic called the six daily threes that I write about in my books and my papers. And I talk about in my videos and all that because you want to prioritize certain food groups because they are nutritionally unique. And one of them is leafy greens and cruciferous vegetables. So making sure you're getting this every day, three servings a day, at least, um, legumes. So, um, lentils, peas, every bean, hummus should be a food group, soy foods. Those are all really wonderful and important foods. And I recommend about one to one and a half servings a day. And then there's nuts and seeds, again, new, unique nutritionally because of things like vitamin E and uh, they're just an arginine, these, these certain nutrients that are kind of unique. And the research is very compelling that we should include those in a daily, on our daily diet. The other colored vegetables, the, di the dark reds and oranges and yellows, you know, getting the rainbow every day and the fruits, you know, servings of fruits, three servings of fruits a day as well. I do like to say, you know, to try to get a rainbow every day. And the sixth one, of course, is exercise or movement. So being active is important on a daily basis too. So that, that all of that right there, that will support healthy bone function and bone strength. And, you know, everyone after the age of, I think it's 25, we start to reduce bone mass. Like we start to lose bone mass every year. So we want to mitigate that loss. And especially now that we're looking at the extra risk of being on a vegan diet, those are the things we need to really prioritize, make sure you're getting action and movement and you're, you're hitting those bones a little bit here and there all the time. And, and you, we do our best. I think there is no diet that is perfect no matter what. And so we worry a little bit about our bones. We make sure we take extra care of our bones. That said, then we're, you know, it's not like we want to have some animal products to avoid the bone risk because then we're putting ourselves at risk of the number one cause of death around the world, cardiovascular disease and all the other ones we know that are associated with animal product consumption. So it is definitely something to be aware of. You know, we got to keep, keep it real. We've got to be, you know, I, I'm always open to, listening to the evidence always and evidence first. And that's why I'm glad the study came out. It's alarming, but we'll still, we'll, we'll focus our, our efforts on making sure we have the best form of a plant-based diet possible.